Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In this video we're going to be unleashing the potential of the Flipper Zero by installing custom firmware. Now I know I've got the Flipper Zero default download page in front of me but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading over to a GitHub repository, checking out the different features that the firmware has to offer and then we're going to look at the installation instructions and hopefully install the firmware and check it out a little bit. Now I know that there's a lot of different firmware options available at the moment. There's Rogue Master amongst other ones, Awesome Flipper. However, the one I want to look at is Flipper Zero Firmware by Engineer, and you can find that on his GitHub repo, GitHub Engineer Flipper Zero Firmware, where Engineer is in LeetSpeak. So if we scroll down and have a look, you can see that it's got a lovely graphic there, but welcome to the Flipper Zero Unleashed Firmware repo. Our goal is to make any feature possible in this device without limitations. Please help us emulate for all sub gigahertz dynamic rolling code protocols. Software is experimental purposes uh, only and is not meant for illegal activity. We do not condone illegal activity and strongly encourage keeping transmissions to legal valid uses allowed by the law again some frequencies are restricted in different countries so before you just start going around and scanning stuff and broadcasting stuff you might want to uh, check out what's legal to do in your country or your region so what's changed sub gigahertz regional tx restrictions removed sub gigahertz frequency range can be extended in settings one it can damage flippers hardware many rolling code protocols have now been added and saved to send captured signals fac slh spa manual create sub gigahertz static code brute force login rfid fuzzer plugin custom community plugins and games added extra sub gigahertz frequencies a lot of this stuff i don't know what it does yet and i'm still researching a lot of the flippers potential so recompiled infrared tv universal remote for all buttons universal remote for projectors fans ac audio sound bars that'd be cool uh bad usb keyboard layouts that would also be cool as well because if you know about the bad usb it's going to be a bit dependent on the uh, language that you have set up on the system so if if your payload is written in you know qwerty english uk british or whatever or american and they're using a colmac keyboard then it's not going to work customizable flipper name so if you're unhappy with your flipper zero's name you can change that other small fixes and changes throughout current modifications and new sub gigahertz protocols hs101 and motors came automo fac blah bft mito key lock not all system supported yet so community apps included you've got an rfid fuzzer plugin so i imagine if you know about rfid it's like a setting that gets written to device like a card or a fob and then you can use that to enter buildings or unlock things and the fuzzer is it will just fuzz a parameter or something with loads of different things so in this case i expect it will just increment through the different known ranges until it gets an unlocked sub gigahertz brute force plugin not brute forcing is sub gigahertz playlist plugin d auth plugin wi-fi scanner plugin i imagine that's wi-fi deal thing but i'm not sure there's another little cool device which is specifically for wi-fi and you can broadcast a bunch of SSIDs and like Rick Roll people so it would just broadcast a bunch of SSIDs where it's never going to give you up so I imagine that is it also has a deal for it on it which I assume is what this plugin is for Wi-Fi scanner multi converter plugin I'm not sure what that does WAV plugin WAV player plugin okay so you can play WAV files UPC barcode generator plugin GPIO century safe plugin Wi-Fi marauder I heard my Wi-Fi marauder is like a really fun sort of thing to get set up with sniffer and mouse jacker cool simple clock universal rf remix spectrum analyzer <laughs> and here is honestly what i'm mainly interested in if i'm being honest uh doom zomboids flappy bird arkanoid tic-tac-toe tetris other changes bad usb keyboard layouts sub gigahertz new frequency analyzer sweet so that's it this is custom firmware again you'll see like not a lot of this you'll have installed on your flipper zero and we can install it and the way we do that is we just go to how to install the firmware okay so just a bit of a warning whenever you update any firmware there is the potential for bricking the device however based on the blog post i've seen on the flipper zero blog it does seem that they've got a pretty bulletproof way of updating the firmware to try to avoid this if you manage to overwrite the original firmware or corrupt it or even the flipper os itself you can damage it where you won't be able to turn the device on again but if we read the blog post quickly what you'll see is that they got this diagram here which shows the update process when they've already got free space with the old firmware on it puts the new firmware on and there is a step where both the old firmware and new firmware are on at the same time and then the old firmware gets removed now hopefully this should prevent bricking um, but there's also a sort of layout where it shows you where the flipper firmware is and then you've got the little FS the little flipper operating system so yeah hopefully bricking the 
device isn't that much of a risk but what I'd recommend is just check that it's working before you unplug it because that tends to be where the problems are if you're flashing firmware and you accidentally yank the device while it's writing chances are you've corrupted it and the device won't boot again it's happened to me plenty of times with Kindles and Android devices so before we go any further we need to make sure that we've updated flipper to the latest version so we're just going to click update new release firmware will be installed and then this will go through the installation process and write firmware to it just to make sure that the flipper is up to the latest release version. Once the update's been applied, just click continue. Okay, now that that's updated, this is going to be an ideal time to back up. Perhaps we should have backed up before we did the update, but hey, if we click on the spanner, we can click back up and we can just save that to anywhere on our file system. And this will ensure that all your settings are saved just in case there's an issue and you want to revert back to that file at a later date. So now that the warnings are out the way and I've told you how to back up your device, I feel like we can move forward and go on to actually installing the firmware. So. If we go down to how to install okay with the disclaimer out of the way and the backups taken we can now get on to installing the firmware so if we just scroll down to find the how to install and you'll see there get the latest firmware from github it says to install or to make sure that the firmware is up to date before proceeding and it says you can use the web updater you just have to go to the releases page connect your device and then via the web updater you click connect and press the install button now i have tried this but i think because i've just updated my flipper it no longer works so there's probably an update pending for this but i'll just show you what happens we go to releases and if we click on install via the web updater what happens is is if i plug in my flipper for now and I click connect and I see my device there and I click connect nothing happens click on my device click on archive CLI paint it just doesn't recognize it I'm sure this is just because the version I'm on and the version that this requires is just slightly out of sync but hey what I'm gonna do instead then is I'm gonna scroll down to here and I'm gonna get the tarball and I'm just gonna save that and then we have some instructions further down if we go to the install page and it should say how to do it with the mobile app or how to do it with Q flipper download the Q flipper that allows the TGZ installation so maybe I need to install this okay new one installed now if we go back to the updates we can see download the flipper z update table which i've done launch queue flipper connect to your device and select install from file so all we're going to have to do here is we're going to go to install from file and then we are going to go to our downloads and then we're going to pick the flipper update that i just downloaded and click open firmware from file as the uh, update will be installed and then we can just click install uploading firmware and hopefully this doesn't completely destroy my device i'm sure it'd be fine Okay, fantastic. You can see on the screen there that it was a success and I can see here and I'll put a screenshot uh, a photo into the video that that has worked as well. We can now have Flipper Unleashed. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to show off right away is that we have a clock and I assume that this is set via the system time from the system that updated it because Flipper isn't currently connected to the internet. There's no Wi-Fi module. It does have Bluetooth, but we now have a clock and it has a stopwatch. We can start and stop the time. Heading over to the infrared, we can now see that we have a lot more universal remote controls. Before we just had TV, but now we have audio. I assume that's your sound bars and speakers. We've got projectors, so if you're in class or if someone's doing a presentation, you control them a little bit. We've got fan control. We also have air conditioning, so if you're in an area where the air conditioning is a bit too hot, again, this would all be illegal. This is just as an example, but yeah, there are a lot of different infrared remotes on there now. And onto the bad USB. Now, you remember that there was the layouts. Well, there's no layouts in the folder, but... There you go, at least the folder is now there. Okay, so in applications, you've got Game Misc, Tools, GPIO. In Misc, you've got a music player. Uh, it errors out, I'm not sure why, I need to look into it. Uh, you've got a UPAC generator, which generates the barcode. You have a multi-converter, which converts decimal to hex. You've got a UART echo, I'm not sure what that does. I think it might just echo something out onto the command. You've got a USB mouse, I'm not sure if that works either. Something I want to try, but just wanted to go through the list of options here. Then back into applications again, under tools, we have a Bluetooth remote, and it works with like keynote boards, uh, keyboards, media, and mouses. 
Pico Paz Reader. I'm not sure what this is, but this actually broke when I tried it. Um, it won't let you exit out of it by pressing the back button. If you run into this issue, all you have to do is hold the back button and press the left button and it should exit back to the main menu. Okay, you can see you got your RFID fuzzer. So if we go into there, you see that you have different options. You've got the HID Prox and you've got the EM4100. And then if you click start, you can see what I was on about earlier, where it's fuzzing through the different values, where it's going 111111, and so on and so forth. Then if you go over to the other option, it's just the same, but this is a longer number of strings. So eventually it may take a while, but it may be able to guess the correct value that you're trying to check. Now we've got a spectrum analyzer. It's not really doing much there. So I'm just going to exit out of that. We've got a sub gigahertz playlist. Again, there's a lot of stuff I'm not really familiar with what it does. And it's where I'm sort of still on this wireless technology learning journey. And we've got a brute forcer there, which brute force a number of different frequencies in the megahertz range. Going back into the menu and going down to games, we have the snake, which was already pre-installed. Um, I have heard there's a modder out there who's modded this so that every time you play snake, it actually makes your dolphin more happy. I'm not sure if it's part of this package or this firmware, but that's a really good idea. I think that they should add that to all games. So if I just sit there playing other games... And I got loads. Uh, we got Arcanoids, which is your sort of block blaster, where you just gotta, you know, hit the ball and uh, break the blocks and not lose the ball, um, which I did there. Then we've got my favourite. Rip and tear. <laughs> yeah, some crazy fool, like guy out there, some crazy soul, bless them. Uh, has managed to get Doom working on the Flipper Zero. What do they say about Doom and hacking? If it's a device, somebody will work out how to play Doom on it. And yeah, somebody has, bless them, learnt how to put Doom on it. And I've got to say as well, it runs really smoothly. Yeah, the graphics leave a lot to be desired, but what do you expect from one of these types of displays? But look how smoothly he's run around, and hopefully I managed to get into an engagement with a imp in a moment. And you can see, like, me blowing his head off if I'm not too busy running into wars. But, you know, I'm playing one-handed, give a guy some credit. Uh, hopefully up here, there you go, you can see there's an imp. I'm just going to blast him in the face. Bang! Hey, let's keep going. Let's hunt for some more. Rip and tear. There's another guy up here. Let's go and take him out. Okay, that's enough doom. And then we've got the old classic, or the new classic, should I say, Flappy Bird, which I've always been terrible at. As you can see, I keep hitting the posts. But this works just as well. So if you, you know, you're bored and you're waiting on the train or on a bus or somewhere or in a meeting room, or maybe not a meeting room, or waiting for an interview, you can just pull out your Flipper Zero, play some Flappy Bird or some Doom. Then we got Zomboids. Um, I'm not familiar with this game. It's a wave shooter though, by the looks of things. Uh, I'm not sure if it was on like an older console or, or where this came from, but that's just my own naivety of gaming, I think. But it seems like pretty fun. It reminded me of Plants vs. Zombies, but I'm pretty sure that's not what it's supposed to be, because obviously you get different turrets in that. And finally, we have the classic. <laughs> Tetris! Yeah, I sank many hours to this on the Sega Master System, or the Sega Mega Drive, one or the other. Yeah, Tetris. Uh, it's also in VR now as well with the Tetris effect on the Oculus Quest. That's quite a uh, mind-bending experience. It goes on forever. But yeah, you know, if you just want to play some Tetris, then by all means, it's right there on the Flipper Zero on the Unleashed package. Now, I'm sorry I've done an awful job of explaining the different features on it. There's a lot I need to research into it, and I only get so many hours a day to do these videos and to do my own sort of studying on the different sort of technologies. Right now I'm trying to get through the red team in rooms on Try Hack Me, so this has been a sort of rushed video just to get something out on the Flipper Zero because my last video has 
almost reached 10k, which is absolutely insane. I never thought I'd get that many. So thank everybody who's watched that. Oh, you got tic-tac-toe as well. You can play noughts and crosses. But yeah, again, this Flipper Unleashed firmware seems like a lot of fun. And I want to test out the other ones as well. I do want to test out the Rogue Master firmware. That seems great. And there's a bunch of other apps that I want to install. But yeah, if, if you're looking for how to update your firmware, follow the instructions. Again, make sure you back up and just be prepared. You know, if you brick it, it's unfortunate. But again, the chances of that are unlikely. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been fun going through the firmware. I ran into a lot of issues along the way just because I'm a bit of a wally. But anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Kind regards.